Hello students! Welcome to Math and Magic. For this video, I will discuss the remainder and factor theorems. In real life, it is seldom that we divide or partition objects perfectly. From food, money, and even time. There are really times that we are left with something which cannot be equally divided. In mathematics, these are known as remainders. In the previous lesson on division of polynomials, it was noted that we can consider the remainder as part of the quotient by expressing it as a string divided by a divisor. The existence of a remainder happens when a polynomial is not exactly divisible by the divisor. Otherwise, you can have a zero remainder. Also in the previous topic, You've learned that there are different ways on how we can divide polynomials, like long division and synthetic division. Through these methods, you are able to identify whether the polynomial produce a remainder or not. So going back to the two theorems, by definition, remainder theorem is a test which states that the value of a polynomial P of X at X equal to C is equal to the remainder when p of x is divided by x minus c. To prove the theorem, we consider the division algorithm definition. p of x equals q of x times quantity x minus c plus r, where q of x is the quotient, x minus c is the divisor, and r is the remainder. So we should be able to show that p of c is equal to r. First, we write p of x equals q of x times quantity x minus c plus r. Then equate x minus c or the divisor by 0. Hence, we will have x value that is equal to c. Substitute c to the equation. It will become p of c equals q of c times quantity c minus c plus r. As you can see, the divisor quantity C minus C is now equal to 0. So by zero product property, any number or factor we multiply by 0 will be 0. Thus, we have P of C that is equal to R. After showing that this assumption is true, let's have an example. Item number 1. What is the remainder when 4x cubed? minus 10x squared plus x plus 9 is divided by x minus 2. So using the remainder theorem, we will equate the divisor x minus 2 by 0 so that we can get the value of x. By doing so, x will be equal to positive 2. When you transpose negative 2 to the other side of the equation, its sign will change. So x is equal to positive 2. Next, we will substitute the value of x in the dividend. That will become p of 2 be equal to 4 times the cube of 2 minus 10 times the square of 2 plus 2 plus 9. Then evaluate. Cube of 2 is 8 times 4 is equal to 32. Minus the square of 2 is 4 times 10 is 40 plus 2 plus 9. Performing the operation, P of 2 is now equal to positive 3. Hence, when the polynomial 4x cubed minus 10x squared plus x plus 9 is divided by x minus 2, the remainder is 3. Now, if you want to check whether this value is correct, you may use synthetic division. Doing that to show that our remainder is correct, we will get the numerical coefficients and constant of the dividend. Those are 4, negative 10, positive 1, and positive 9. Equating the divisor by 0 to get the value of C, that is positive 2. Applying the procedure in synthetic division, we first bring down the leftmost number, which is 4. Next, we will multiply 4 by the divisor 2 product is equal to 8. Place this value in the second row below negative 10. Then add the second column numbers. 
negative 10 plus 8 is negative 2. Doing the same process, negative 2 times positive 2 is negative 4. 1 plus negative 4 is negative 3. Negative 3 times positive 2 is negative 6. And 9 plus negative 6 is equal to positive 3. Now remember that the last number in the right serves as the remainder. So thus, the remainder is positive 3. Another example, apply remainder theorem to find the remainder when x plus 1 divides the polynomial 5x raised to 4 plus 2x cubed minus 7x squared minus 2x plus 2. Doing the same process, equate the divisor x plus 1 by 0 to solve for the value of c. That will be x plus 1 equals 0, transpose positive 1 to the right side, x is now equal to negative 1. Next, substitute negative 1 to the dividend, it will be p of negative 1 equals 5 times the 4th power of negative 1 plus 2 times the cube of negative 1 minus 7 times the square of negative 1 minus 2 times negative 1 plus 2. Evaluating the values, 4th power of negative 1 is positive 1 times 5 is 5. The cube of negative 1 is negative 1 times 2 product is negative 2. 7 times the square of negative 1 is 7. Negative 2 times negative 1 is equal to positive 2, then plus 2. Performing operations, P of negative 1 is equal to 0. Hence, when the polynomial 5x raised to 4 plus 2x cubed minus 7x squared minus 2x plus 2 is divided by x plus 1, the remainder is 0. Now, in case where the remainder is 0, we say that the divisor is a factor of the polynomial x. This leads us to factor theorem. By definition, factor theorem states that if c is a 0 of the polynomial p of x, that is p of c be equal to 0, then the binomial x minus c is a factor of the polynomial. Here, we are allowed to use either synthetic method or remainder theorem to state if the divisor is a factor or not. As an example, let p of x equals x cubed minus 2x squared minus 22x plus 35. Use any method to show whether the divisor x minus 5 is a factor or not. Using remainder theorem, the divisor x minus 5 will be expressed as x equal to 5. We will transpose negative 5 to the right side. It will become positive. Substitute this value, or 5, to the dividend p of x. That will be p of 5 equals the cube of 5 minus 2 times the square of 5 minus 22 times 5 plus 35. Evaluating the equation... P of 5 is equal to 0. Since the polynomial is 0, based on factor theorem, the divisor x minus 5 is a factor of x cubed minus 2x squared minus 22x plus 35. Now using synthetic method, just to show that our answer is correct, C value in the divisor is still positive 5. Writing the numerical coefficients and constant of the dividend, those are 1, negative 2, negative 22, and positive 35. Again, we need to bring down the leftmost number, that is 1, then we will multiply it by the value of C. 1 multiplied by 5 is 5. Place the product below negative 2, then add second column's number. Negative 2 plus 5 is positive 3. Then 3 times 5 again is positive 15. Plus negative 22. That is negative 7. Negative 7 times 5 is negative 35. Adding the last column numbers, 35 and negative 35, sum is 0. Thus, the remainder is 0. 
So it is true that x minus 5 is a factor of the polynomial. For our last example, determine the value of n to make x plus 2 a factor of 3x raised to 4 plus 5x squared plus nx plus 6. So to solve this item, we first need to equate the polynomial 3x raised to 4 plus 5x squared plus nx plus 6 by 0. Since according to the problem, x plus 2 is a factor. So that will be 0 equals 3x raised to 4 plus 5x squared plus nx plus 6. Next, substitute the value of x in the divisor. Here we will equate x plus 2 by 0 and then transpose positive 2 to the right side. It will become negative 2. Equation will be 0 equals 3 times the 4th power of negative 2 plus 5 times the square of negative 2 plus n times negative 2 plus 6. Performing the operations on the right side, the 4th power of negative 2 is positive 16 times 3 is 48. The square of negative 2 is positive 4 times 5 product is positive 20. Negative 2 times n is negative 2n, then plus 6. So here, we will transpose the term with the variable n to the left side. Negative 2n, when transposed to the left side, will become positive 2n. Adding all the constant terms in the right side, 48, 20, and 6, sum is 74. Next, divide both sides by the numerical coefficient of the variable n. That is positive 2. n value now is 74 divided by 2 or simply 37. Hence, when n is equal to 37 in the polynomial p of x, x plus 2 is a factor. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned something. God bless.